brought to you by the Every Dollar app. Start budgeting for free today. To catch up a little bit. There is a company called Standard and Poor. They are one of the companies that rates things on the stock market. The most famous thing that they rate, there's a company called Dow Jones that has an average of the industrial companies, which creates the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which is a little strange because a lot of the companies are not industrial anymore that are part of that it's average. An old-timey term. But it, can, it comes from the, you know, when America was more uh, manufacturing-driven than it is today. Uh, the S&P, Standard & Poor, rates the top, the largest, 500 companies that are publicly traded, meaning their stock is sold on what we call the big board, the New York Stock Exchange. So these are the largest 500 companies that sell stock in America. And that means they have a, that the, as this group of companies goes, is a good indication of what the economy is doing. It's a good indication, certainly, of what the stock market is doing because basically they make up the stock, the vast majority of the stock market. So the top 500 companies on the New York Stock Exchange is called the S&P, Standard & Poor's S&P 500. Now, that's important because that's actually a better way of measuring what the stock market is doing than the Dow is, okay, or the Dow Jones Industrial Average or any other measure for that matter. This is a very generic measure, and people in the financial world use the S&P 500 as a, as a plumb line to tell what the market is doing. So if a, if a mutual fund, for instance, outperforms the S&P 500, that means the mutual fund is making better returns than the market as a whole. If it underperforms the S&P 500, it makes less returns. So all that's important. Um, nice article, uh, James, our producer, pulled up for us. If the S&P 500 hits a new all-time high in 24, you can expect a strong year of gains to follow, according to Ned Davis Research. The investment firm crunched the numbers and found that when the S&P 500 hits at least one record high in a given year, that year's median return is about 15%. So what they're saying is, is that when the, when the stock market tops out and has a new record, that is almost always a year that you get great returns. Well, duh. Obviously, if the stock market's hitting a new record, you ought to be getting great returns. It kind of makes sense, right? So, Good foreshadowing, um, guys. Yeah. But, I mean, it, it makes sense. That's encouraging. It's an, it, it's an interesting it, – it, it is – it is a valid statistical correlation, so I like the, I like the study. The S and P five hundred has tended to post double digit gains in years with record highs. Uh, Ned Davis Research said the data point highlights two typical characteristics of the stock market: that strength begets more strength, and that stocks don't typically crash from all time highs. Uh, so just because it goes way up generally means it's going to go up. It doesn't mean it's going to go right back down, and that makes sense, of course, too. Of course, this stat is not a slam dunk. Uh, the S&P is less than 2% away from hitting a new all-time high. If it were to do that in the next day or two or the next month or two, then a, uh, you know, a, the historical data indicates that you're going to have a great year, mm. which also makes sense because it wouldn't have hit a high if it wasn't, hadn't moved towards a great year. But it doesn't just jump up there and then jump down. Uh, so all this to say we're close to hitting a new record ever in the history of the stock market it up and if it hits that that is a great indicator that 24 is going to be a great year to have invested uh which means that if you're waiting until after the presidential election in november to do your investing that's probably a dumb idea if you got some money you're sitting on right now i would buy your mutual fund like tomorrow Right now. And if you're thinking about pulling all your money out because you saw some headlines, don't do that either. Yeah. We found that if you just ride this roller coaster over time, you're going to hit a new record high and a new record high. And, those and then the it's going to go down. Are. And then it's going to come up. And then it's going to go down. And then it's going to come up. This is how life works. I mean, it's how the real estate, it's how the real estate market works. It's how mutual funds work. It's how the whole you know stock market works. The S&P 500, all this does that. So here's the deal. You got 100000 bucks, and you wait till November. And this market hits and does what this study indicates, and it makes, let's say it makes 15%, which was the average, the median, okay? So $100,000, and you don't invest it. You wait till November. 
and uh, the market goes up 15%, what'd you lose? $15,000. Because you didn't do what I just said to do, invest. So you stock, and let me just tell you, real estate's exactly the same place right now. Is real estate going to go down? No, it's not. We have a tremendous shortage of housing. There's more buyers, even in a sluggish, slow market where people are sitting on the sidelines because interest rates spiked up. Now they're coming back down. They're coming off the sidelines in the last two weeks, like never before. But, um, if you wait a year to buy a house because you're somehow waiting to time the market, you've got this mysterious insight that you think things are going to go down. You're wrong. And if you wait a year to invest in the market because you're waiting on the market to come down, you're going to miss it. And if I'm wrong, give it another 12 months and I won't be wrong because it'll come up. I mean, really? Uh, So I got to tell you, what would Dave, what is Dave Ramsey doing right now? Buying. Period. Investing. Period. I'm not waiting on the clash of the old men, Trump and Biden. I'm not waiting on two 80-year-olds 80 80 year to have an MMA to decide what I'm going to do. Because who, who the crap knows? One of them may break a hip. Well, it's, it's more like bumper cars that are running out of battery bumping into each other more than a clash. It's like two Muppets. The dirt was the old men Muppets, right? So Statler and Waldorf, is that them? That's him. Oh, my gosh. So you don't wait. On this, don't sit, don't watch Fox News and CNN and and let your butt sit on the bench. Get in the game, shoot the ball, fire, pull the trigger, whatever, whatever metaphor we need to use to cause you to actually do the investing. Sports, weaponry, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes to get you moving here. We'll do, we'll go whatever, whichever direction you need to go. And this validates a lot of what you've been saying for 30 years, Dave. We looked at historical data and the S&P 500 average annual return is 10 to 12%. And they're saying right here, this is going to could be a year about 15% median return. And people always go, well, Dave, I'm not getting that in my account. Well, yeah, dummy, not in a given one month period will you see that, but over time, the yeah, average it's is 12%. the average. That's how averages work. Averages. I think we all need to go back to basic statistical. math. Statistical. Yeah, these, these, uh, these, these sixth grade math classes that people flunked. But yeah, that that's the thing. So, so all of this to say, boys and girls, Please be steadily investing. Please. The people that invest are the ones that have money. There's a high correlation between people who save money, invest money, that have money. Hello. Why was that deep? You know, if you don't if you don't put any money in the account, please don't expect any money to be in the account. Why is that hard? Well, there, but just keep doing it. Just keep doing it. Just keep doing it. I think there's a lot it. of fear. And it's why I love, you know, working with a financial pro, uh, smart investor pro, great, great person to work with to reach out to a financial advisor and investment pro and go, help me understand this. And you make the decisions and they're not going to pull the money out for you. You are calling the shots here and they're going to help you understand the perspective that we're showing you on the show today. Yeah. You can pull up the historical data and look at the track records, look at the trend lines. It's really not hard to understand. I mean, it's really not. I mean, if you pull up in a neighborhood and there's cars up on blocks and the gutters are falling off the houses and the place, everything you see needs weed eaters, then, then, you know, and then you pull up the MLS data on that neighborhood and you see the values have been going down. It's not a, it doesn't require rocket surgery to figure out that this thing's going down in value. I mean, you know, it's just not hard. And if you pull up in the neighborhood and everything's manicured, and it looks like freaking leave it to beaver lives there, you know, and you go pull up MLS data on that, you're going to see a line up and to the right. Hello. Well, it doesn't take a rocket surgeon to figure that out either. Go buy a house in that neighborhood. This is, these are trend lines. It's historical data. You can watch this stuff. Create your free every dollar budget today. The simplest way to budget for your life.